water baptism questions answered there's a lot of questions that people have why should we get water baptized is water baptism necessary for salvation can children be water baptized can you get baptized through sprinkling also during water baptism why do we baptize in the name of Jesus but some people baptize in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit which is the correct way all of these questions we will address in this video let's start with the verse in the Bible in the scripture it talks about the doctrine of baptisms. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 it says the following, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. So this pretty much tells us that there, there are doctrine of baptisms. It's not just one baptism, there's few baptisms. Let's look at few of these baptisms. The first baptism is the baptism of Moses. We see this mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 2. Israel, they were baptized in Moses, it says. The second baptism is the baptism of John and this is the most popular baptism. It's different than the baptism of Jesus because John's baptism was to prepare people for the coming of Jesus Christ. In fact, in book of Acts chapter 18 verses 3 and 4, Apostle Paul rebaptized people who only got baptized by the baptism of John. This was a baptism to repentance. The third baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the one where the Holy Spirit baptizes you into Jesus. This happens during your salvation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 it says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. So that means that the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Jesus Christ at the time of our salvation. And this baptism is done by the Holy Spirit into Jesus. Baptism number four is the baptism of Jesus. Is the baptism into the Holy Spirit. Now I'm not referring the one where Jesus got water baptized. I am talking about the one where Jesus is doing the baptism because the one where Jesus got water baptized, this was the John's baptism where he baptized Jesus into water. But the baptism of Jesus is the one that John talked about. He says that he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. And so baptism of Jesus is when Jesus baptizes you into the Holy Spirit. Now do you see the difference? The Holy Spirit baptized baptizes you into the body of Jesus that happens at salvation and then Jesus baptizes you into the Holy Spirit that happens which I believe and many people believe it's a second experience following your salvation where Jesus baptizes you into the Holy Spirit and you receive the power for fulfilling your purpose. It's not the same experience as when you get the Holy Spirit. This is the experience when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He is in you for you to produce the fruit, to develop Christian character. He fills you, He leads you, He guides you, but then He comes upon you to give you power. And that experience of Him coming upon you is also seen as Jesus baptizing you into the Holy Spirit, pretty much giving you access to the same power that Jesus walked in and this earth. And that's why He tells us that we can do works that He did because we have the same power that raised Christ from the dead, lives inside of us and then comes upon us for ministry. Baptism number four. Five is the baptism of suffering, Mark chapter 10 verse 38 and 39. Some people call it the baptism of the cross and then there's also baptism number six, the water baptism. Now looking into water baptism in the New Testament, we have to start with the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, Jews were not required to get water baptized to join the faith of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They were circumcised shortly after they were born. But the tradition and some teachings teach that people who were Gentiles would come into the Jewish faith would have to be cleansed and they would have to wash themselves as part of the ceremony to step into the Jewish faith as well as they had to be circumcised and they had to commit to obeying the laws of Moses. But in the Old Testament we see a type, a symbol, a shadow of the water baptism. In fact, it's even referred to Noah for example. Apostle Peter, 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 20 and 21 says that as Noah went through the waters of the flood, that's symbolic of us going through the waters during baptism. As well as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1 and 2 that the symbol of Moses going through the Red Sea, leading the nation through the Red Sea is a symbolic of our water baptism as Christians. 
we also go through the water as we are declaring and professing our faith in Christ. As well as some people compare Jonah being in the water, symbol of Christian's baptism, but I'll leave it at that. Let's dive into now what the New Testament teaches about the water baptism. So water baptism is the public declaration of a private decision. That means you're publicly declaring what you privately decided. We must understand is that we don't see sinner's prayer in the New Testament and we don't see also people raising their hands and saying, I want to accept Jesus into my heart. The concept of I want to accept Jesus into my heart and coming to the front and praying sinner's prayer is not necessarily in the scripture. The idea is good. I'm not against that idea. We do that. But we know the sinner's prayer doesn't save people. Sinner's prayer is just simply sinners praying to God to save them. And coming to the front there's nothing wrong with that. But biblically, if you wanted to follow Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who took your place on the cross, the way you would publicly express that was through water baptism. So that was your way of saying, I want to follow Jesus Christ. Until you get water baptized, it wasn't considered that you're really following the Lord. Now you probably maybe did in your heart, but you were probably afraid to express that publicly because once you went public, the whole hell would break loose. You know, you might lose your job. You might get excommunicated from a synagogue if you were a Jewish person because that meant you mean business. This is not just like, oh, I just prayed a little prayer. I feel better and I'm um, just accepting Jesus into my heart like an addition to my life that I'm living, religious life. This meant business. This, this meant that Caesar is not your Lord, your God, your King. Jesus is your King. Jewish religion is not the one that you are now following, you're following Jesus Christ and all of these laws and the sacrifices were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. It's huge deal, big deal, okay? And some churches, they still do that where the moment you give your life to Christ, the moment you repent of your sin, you get baptized instantly. Some churches, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, they take six to seven months to a year. When you get baptized, they took tests to get water baptized. We'll talk about that in a moment. But let's read two main verses that I will base my understanding or my presentation on water baptism. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, that's the water baptism of Jesus. And then Acts chapter 2 verse 38. And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So here are four reasons why every person needs to get baptized who has given their life to the Lord. Number one, Jesus modeled water baptism. When John tried to oppose Jesus, because honestly Jesus is the only person who did not need to get water baptized. And John was saying, hey Jesus, th that's not for you. Like all this baptism deal is for everyone to get ready for your coming. And I love what Jesus responded in Matthew chapter 3 verse 15. Jesus answered, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. When he had been baptized and was met, as we met mentioned already, he came up from the water and then the Spirit came upon him. So Jesus pretty much responds to John and say, hey, as a perfect Lamb of God who lived a holy, righteous life, it's part of me fulfilling my righteousness. That means as a Christian, you should follow the example of Jesus Christ and you have to get water baptized. Number two reason why you need to get water baptized is because Jesus' followers practiced water baptism. They preached and they invited people to get baptized. So this was not like John the Baptist's idea, like little revival formula that John did and Jesus kind of borrowed it because it was popular. No, th this continued. After Jesus' death, his followers baptized people in water as a sign that they're following the Messiah. Number three, Jesus actually commanded water baptism as part of us spreading the good news around the world. So as part of the assignment, as we will go all around the world and make disciples, we will teach people of what Jesus told us. And then part of that is we will tell people to get water baptized. So it's part of the Great Commission. And that's mentioned in Matthew 28 verse 18. Number four reason why you need to get water baptized is because it symbolizes your old life dying and you rising up to living in your new Christian life. And that's exemplified in Romans chapter 6 verse 3 and 4. So Apostle Paul who wrote a large portion of the New Testament was a big component and also a big spokesman for water baptism. And he said as Jesus died and was buried and rose again, so is when a Christian gets water baptized, they identify with the Lord Jesus Christ, identify with his death and then also identify with his burial and with his resurrection. So what is required for water baptism and that is faith in Jesus Christ and repentance from sin are the two requirements for water baptism. Let me say it again, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and repentance of sin. 
again. So not merely believing that God exists. Demons believe and they're still demons. But faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord, this is what separates that faith. But that faith must lead to repentance. But repentance means you're changing your mind that results in the churn in your life. It's pretty much like a U-churn. You were going one way and now you're going in total opposite direction. But it starts with a change of your mind first toward Christ, toward God, and toward yourself as a sinner. And then the fruit of that repentance is that your life begins to take a different churn. You might still struggle with some things, but the churn in your life, the direction of your life is already changed. And when these two things have happened, you need to get water baptized. Now, some people feel like they're not ready for water baptism. They're like, well, I need to wait for a few years and when I get anchored and established in the Lord and then I will get water baptized. But we see it contrary to the teachings and the practice of the early church. When Philip was writing with the guy from Ethiopia and he was telling him about the gospel, eunuch right away said, hey, water is here. What's hindering me? Can I get water baptized now? And Philip said, yeah, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Let's do it. And so when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, he was telling them right away, believe, repent, get baptized. Same thing with Paul. When he would preach at different families and places, he would baptize people instantly. When Paul believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and spent three days blind and fasting, Ananias came, prayed for him, he got filled with the Holy Spirit and he got baptized. I believe that your water baptism should follow right after your salvation. You should not wait for many, many months to study the Bible, figure out the Christian faith and also get grounded in the local church. Scripturally speaking, water baptism was never an entrance to church membership or a qualification to be married by a pastor. Now the tr tradition I grew up in, you get water baptized so that you can get married at the church. And a lot of people got baptized not because they believed in the Lord and they because they repented. It's because it's the only way they're going to get married in the local church. And this is the only way they can become a member and they had to be, be, a, be a member to get married. And so th they twisted the water baptism idea from the scripture. Now I'm not saying it's necessarily bad. What I'm saying is that we shouldn't say that that is scriptural. It's much more of a tradition. And some traditions are not bad, some traditions are good, but scripturally speaking, water baptism should follow your conversion instantly. The example I like to use is the example of the wedding ring. You know, when you get married, you don't wait for three years when your marriage gets stable and grounded to wear a wedding ring. You wear a wedding ring instantly. Now, does your marriage go through a seasons of growth and, and changes? Of course, but you don't wear a wedding ring as a qualification of your seasoned and well-grounded marriage. You wear it as a sign that you are married. Same thing with water baptism. It's your public sign that you have committed your life to Christ. You believe that Jesus Christ is who He said He is. He is God. He's your Savior. He is your Lord. And you repented of your sin and your life is headed in the direction of righteousness and holiness to please the Lord. So if you have these two qualifications, you need to get water baptized ASAP because it's part of your discipleship, part of your walking, part of us as Christians rec recruiting people into faith by letting them obey what Jesus teaches us and get water baptized. Now, let me look over a few questions that we have. Is water baptized baptism required for salvation. Now, typically people who grew up in Christian church, they know that it's not. We're saved by grace through faith. But there are scriptures like Epistle of Peter where Peter seems to indicate that we are saved through baptism. And because water baptism was so closely connected to conversion, it was pretty much like publicly saying, I am saved. I am believing in Jesus Christ. People would take these verses and say that you need to get water baptized so you can be saved. But the person on the cross who was a criminal and Jesus said that you will be in paradise with me today, he didn't have time to come down from the cross and get water baptized. Now with this said, this does not mean that now this becomes an excuse that I don't need to get water baptized because you know I'm saved by grace. No, that's like to say well I don't need to go to church, I don't need to read the Bible, I don't need to love my neighbor, I don't need to live right before God. The faith that we have as Christians leads us to good works. We're not saved by good works but our faith leads us to good works and one of those works is public declaration and confession of a water baptism. Now the Catechism of the Catholic Church, CCC, actually teaches that water Water baptism is the first sacrament and gives access to the other required sacraments. And it also teaches that it's an act that forgives sins and grants spiritual rebirth and makes one a member of the church. Catholic Church believes that Jesus requires baptism in order to receive eternal life. And that's where many Christians derive this idea that you need to be water baptized to have eternal life, actually from Catholicism. But we don't see that being confirmed in the scriptures or in the writings of Apostle Paul. Number two is, can infants be water baptized? You have to understand is that in many churches, infant baptism is a sign of the new covenant and the faith of the parents as the circumcision was the sign of the old covenant. 
as well as in Roman Catholic Church, this baptism is believed to wash away original sin and allow the infant to start from a neutral place of innocence and grace. Now, as cute as this idea is, it's not in the Bible. Yes, in the Old Testament, infants were circumcised. And yes, in the New Testament, there are instances where Apostle Paul baptized the whole household. But there's not one instance that indicates that infants were a part of that household. There's also an instance of this disciples forbidding Jesus from blessing the children whom parents brought. But blessing children and baptizing them are two different things. There's no indication of water baptism. I believe that what people mean by water baptism given to infants is what we practice as baby dedication. There is a good thing to dedicate your children to the Lord when they are young. But water baptism requires faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and repentance of sin. Something that infants cannot do. They are not grown enough. They're not mature enough to place that faith. They're covered by the faith of their parents and they're not repenting. And so therefore requirement for water baptism cannot be met by infants. Therefore it shouldn't be given to infants. Another question is can water baptism be done by sprinkling water on someone? Now some denominations they simply sprinkle water and they call that water baptism. But the word baptism comes from the original word baptizo which means immersion. So as you would immerse something that that's where the word comes from. It's not actually a religious word. It's just the word for immersion. And you see when Jesus was baptized he came out of the water. And so in many other instances indicate that water baptism is practiced by full immersion into water. Also when Jesus died he was laid into a tomb. And since water baptism is identification with Jesus' death, burial and resurrection, it makes sense for the water baptism to be by full immersion. Therefore sprinkling is not enough. And that's another reason why you shouldn't baptize infants. Because if you take an infant and you dunk him fully into water, you know, that's not good. That, that's bad for the child. And so we practice as Christians full immersion as Jesus did and as well as the meaning of the Greek word baptism signifies. Another one is that should you be baptized in the name of Jesus only or in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit? This is one of the debates that people have. The church that I serve at, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit because of the instruction given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 28 verses 19. Now the idea comes from book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and then book of Acts chapter 10 verse 48 and few other references in the book of Acts where they baptized in the name of Jesus. Now you may say, so Jesus says to baptize in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and the book of Acts they baptized in the name of Jesus. So we must understand a few things is that the big idea that the early church was spreading is the divinity of Jesus Christ. That Jesus is God which was extremely foreign to a lot of Jewish people and to Gentile believers. And so when they would baptize, they would baptize in Jesus' name. This does not mean they baptized in Jesus' name only. The emphasis in Jesus' name does not exclude that disciples did not baptize in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Let me illustrate it. Let's say I tell you that I went to the mall or to the store with my wife. Now if I don't say to you that I went to the store only with my wife but I said I went to the store with my wife and then I tell another person hey I went to the store yesterday with my wife with my brother and with my sister now when I told you that I went to the store with my wife I didn't lie to you by not including my brother and my sister. And when I told the other person that I went with my brother and my sister and my wife, I simply gave a fuller picture. That's why in some verses in the Bible it would say that there was a blind man that cried out and the same story would be used by another gospel writer and it would say there would be two blind men. One demonized man was, you know, coming out screaming and living in the tombs and then another reference would say two uh, demonized men. One angel spoke out and then another reference would say that there were two angels sitting at the tomb of Jesus. These are not contradictions. Just because one was mentioned, it does not mean that the other one was excluded unless the word only is used, which is the word only is not used in those instances. The same thing applies to water baptism. I don't believe that in the book of Acts, because it refers to in Jesus' name, that disciples did not baptize in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. The big idea here is that people were baptized compared to the John's baptism, which was unto repentance. In the book of Acts, water baptism was unto Christ, not unto repentance. So the big idea was to differentiate the water baptism of John and the water baptism of the early Christians 
Christians and the believers in the Messiah by baptizing into Christ instead of just unto repentance in hopes that Christ is coming. And so, but we stick with what the Lord told us to do as we go preach the gospel and make disciples. We baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Now, there's the denomination, oneness Pentecostalism that really derives and has a feel of modism. And modism is pretty much believes that God is one person instead of three persons and that they believe that God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are simply different modes or forms of the same divine person. And so according to this heresy really, God can switch among three different manifestations. So there's just one God, He just shows up in different modes and forms. And so oneness Pentecostalism embraces that too but they have a little bit different approach to it where they also believe that God can simultaneously manifest Himself in all three different modes as He did during the baptism of Jesus. Now the traditional belief, the doctrine does not embrace that we believe there's one God in three distinct persons who are co-equal and who are persons, separate persons in the Trinity and therefore we baptize in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit because we embrace the Trinity as one God in three persons. Now can you be water baptized on Zoom? Can you be water baptized for example because of pandemic so many people are not able to gather? You can be water baptized virtually. In fact I want to invite you if you're watching this video and you have never been water baptized and maybe the local churches are closed and you're not able to find a place where you can get water baptized or maybe you listen to this video and you're like shoot I have not been water baptized. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. My parents got me dunked when I was a kid. I don't even remember. It was not my choice. I need to get baptized as an adult and I need to do that as soon as possible. Find a local church and get water baptized. If you don't have a local church, I want to invite you. We want to baptize you. Now, you don't need to have a pastor baptize you. You can have another believer, a disciple baptize you. Philip was baptizing a eunuch, you know, and he wasn't necessarily, a, you know, a qualified pastor. He was an evangelist. And so another believer and a disciple can baptize you. We do it simply. We do it actually in person and we do it at the same time on Zoom where you prepare a bathtub or a pool or whatever that you have. You bring another believer if you have access to them in your household or your neighbor and then you put your phone on and the reason why is so that one of our pastors declares those words over you and then you get baptized right on Zoom in front of other believers. Now it helps you kind of feel like you're part of the community. You don't have to get baptized on Zoom. You can be baptized in a bathtub, in a pool, in a jacuzzi um, and it doesn't have to be streamed but we like to make it a celebration when you get baptized because it's really publicly declaring you are a child of God and you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. It's kind of like a wedding, you know. I mean you can do a wedding just in your house or you can do it like in the place where you invite your family and friends and so it's a big deal to get water baptized and you should celebrate it with your friends and your family. And so if you would like to do that with Hungry Gen, go to hungrygen.com forward slash online baptism. Links are all below. We would love to take you through that so that you can fulfill your duty as a disciple of Jesus Christ and follow Jesus as He has given us the example of water baptism. Have you been water baptized? If yes, where and how? Describe to us your experience of water baptism in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Hey, hit thumbs up. I know this was more of a doctrinal and foundational video and I'm going to release more of these. I know they're not as trendy or clickbaity but help me to spread this to other friends and family members. Share this on your WhatsApp, Viber, Telegram, Facebook or other groups and then you can use this video as a point of reference for somebody that you're trying to talk to about the topic of water baptism.